friggin' dragon rider reject. No one to pick up in his crew didn't want you. Dragon City. Wait, where are you going? I got a mosh! <laughs> What the fuck? Good morning, brownies! This is the Concert Cruiser, and welcome back to Hoof Rock, where I look at the songs of MLP. And today, we're going to look at Ballad of the Crystal Ponies. But I got someone here who wants to say something about this song. So please welcome my special guest, Brawny Buck. Welcome to the studio, sir. Greetings. Thanks for having me. Anytime. Now, I know you're not much of a music guy, but from my understanding, this song tackles a subject that you like. Indeed. It was the first song that I listened to all the way through in this show. It was brief, did an excellent job of telling the story, could work as a standalone song, and had a message that can be applied to both the episode and life as a whole. Interesting. See, while the music has a variety of instruments all playing in perfect, beautiful harmony, I think it's a shame that the song is short, the history doesn't explain much, I don't really care if it can stand on its own, but I will give you that last one. Please don't tell me you're going to dock points from a song for being too short again. Regardless, I think I'm going to need you to explain all of that because I thoroughly disagree with everything you just said. The difference between Glass of Water and Ballad is Water feels like a musical number that was just played for laughs. It's not structured like an actual song with verses and choruses, while Ballad does. I think the song's brevity contributes to how effective and enjoyable it is. If it had been any longer, it would have felt more like padding and cut into the episode's runtime when there were other important plot pieces to address. It's a matter of personal preference. I love hearing the main six sing in harmony and the song would have been more enjoyable for me if I got to hear them sing for a bit longer. It's a good sound, but it doesn't resonate with me as much. I definitely prefer how they managed to make the song tell a nearly complete story, especially in under two minutes. Establishing the conflict in the first line of the song and the stakes within the second line, it had plenty of its remaining time to divvy up a section of this ancient, yet re-emerged nation's history and culture between each of the main cast. For me, this feels more like a biopic. It doesn't explain what makes them so much more different from the regular breed of ponies. They explained that at the beginning of the episode, though. The Crystal Empire reflects love across Equestria. But that wasn't needed for the song even out of the context of the episode. Someone who knows little to nothing about the show could listen to this and have a general understanding of what's going on in the story. I guess that makes sense. You could even say that it gives the audience a sense of what each character involved is like by showing AJ growing food, Rainbow being tough, Flutter's taking care of critters, Rarity using her skills to make the flag, Pinky being... well, Pinky. I'll admit that before this episode aired, I had never even heard of a flugelhorn. I legitimately thought it was a fictitious instrument made for this episode until I went and looked it up. And we got Twilight being the Taskmaster. That being said, it wouldn't have hurt them to at least drop a line detailing the purpose of the Crystal Ponies. I suppose I can give you that, although I'm not sure where those lines could go considering the song and episode's theme of time being against them. As far as a song standing on its own, I really don't count that against them, because it's not like you're going to be hearing this on mainstream radio. Heck, I don't even know if you'll hear this on satellite, and I doubt non-bronies will be looking this up on Pandora. That may be true, but it doesn't mean that it's not important for any piece of media to exhibit good writing. Many writing teachers convey this through the following analogy. Walk up to a stranger on the street and randomly say something to them. If they don't immediately understand what you're talking about, then it wasn't a complete sentence. And this is especially true for songwriting. I'll give them props for it, but it's not a huge deal breaker for me. Personal preference, then? Personal preference. Moving on, then. Now, didn't you say that this song has an important message? Indeed. Throughout the song itself, they talk about saving the Crystal Ponies with their history. And this struck a chord with me because I believe pretty heavily in the idea of knowing and learning from history to make a better future. And this concept was demonstrated through one of the multiple layers of symbolism that was the Crystal Empire and the villain King Sombra in general. And on this one... I will agree with you. 
the main six had to learn from the Crystal Empire's past by studying its citizens, history, and culture so that they could be more prepared for when King Sombra strikes again. Exactly. Those who don't know their history are doomed to repeat it. Any history buff could tell you that that phrase exists for a reason. Now, you guys have been hearing us talk for some time, but what do you think? Let us know in the comments section, and until next time, this is the Constant Cruiser saying never Hang give on. up. Hang on, before you end it, don't you want to say anything about the music? It's beautiful. That's it? Well, there's nothing wrong with it. It's good, the variety of instruments is great, and it even has a nice bouncing beat that you can clap along to. Sure, I wish it was longer, but that doesn't take away from just how good the music itself is. Alrighty then. I can get behind that. Like the song, it's a short, sweet, and simple response. This is the Concert Cruiser saying never give up the fight for true audio artistry.